Joe. How's it going? Well, it's going really well since I finally get to talk to you again after our last uh, lengthy sit-down for Arctic. That's it. Um, how's it been since? Well, waiting for you to make another film like Stowaway, let me tell you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yeah. I can't wait to do it. I, You know, I don't know why, what it is, but you challenge yourself so much, not just with story, but creating a story that you then have to visually bring to life. Um, you know, with Arctic, you've got white on white on white. You've got survival. You've got solitude. Here, you've got the confines of a very small space station or ship. Um, again, survival. And the moral complexities and the questions of, you know... Do I survive? Do I not survive? You know, what lengths does will man go to? Is there compassion? Is there understanding? You tackle these themes, and as you did with Arctic, you bring this one to life so visually um, in, in a very tactile and tangible sense. With the touch, Thank you. Thank with, you. you know, with the touch of every knob, with the blend, your production design, which is spectacular. Marco Rosser did a great job for you with every knob, with every resistor, condenser, um, you know, old technology mixed with new technology. It, it, that tangibility makes the emotionality and the mental questioning something that w it is resonant, that we can hold on to, we can see, and you do it beautifully. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, and that's what, that's what we wanted, really, you know, was to, to have a film where the drama is based on reality, you know, where uh, an astronaut could watch this and say, ah, they didn't flip too much at this, like everyone else, you know. Um, we wanted to, uh, why not? Right, to have a film where so much of it is uh, driven by uh, so much of the film is driven by just what is possible um, and, and you can always write a film around that so that's the same thing that we did with Arctic right? mm -hmm. um, how I asked uh, some Arctic survivalists uh, what would you have on hand um, and they gave me the five or six things that they would always carry with them, a uh, flare for scaring off polar bears or whatever it may be. So, okay, we won't have them shoot the polar bear. We'll just have them scare them with a flare um, or whatever it may be. Um, so the same thing happened here, but with way, 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 way more things, mm -hmm. <laughs> far many more things. You know, uh, basically it was like Arctic times 100 Oh, very, very much so. Of course, the one thing nobody had is duct tape. And all I kept thinking about is Apollo 13 and duct tape. Duct tape does make... <laughs> every survivalist you know, kit needs duct tape. <laughs> just no, Every survival movie of mine hasn't had duct tape. I think you're right. I, I need to write another one and have people just duct taping things all over the place. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know... Where did the idea for Stowaway arise? Uh, because with so much space travel, especially now, where we're, you know, we have craft on Mars. We've got perseverance yeah. and ingenuity out there. The little helicopter is getting ready to take off. Mm -hmm. We're getting color pictures back. Um, yeah. So we're, and, and this is just in the lag time since you shot this, this film. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we yeah, since I wrote it back in 2015, I mean, it's, it's just exploded. SpaceX was just, uh, just starting out. Um, and, and now it's, it's this powerhouse that it is. Uh, and you have other companies like Blue Origin uh, that are propping up. And, um, yeah, you know, I was very fortunate to, um, to be able to talk to a lot of people at those different companies because they were all really interested in helping us make a film that's so realistic. Mm-hmm. And uh, the initial idea came from, literally, I was trying to write an outline for a completely different film. And my writing partner said, dude, uh, imagine if we were on a lifeboat. And I said, I I'm sorry, I'm busy. I'm trying to write a movie here. <laughs> like, I, I know, but, but 
Well, think about it. it. What if it were your wife, you, your son, and me, and somebody's got to go? And it's going to be me, right? I'm not going to break up the whole family. I'm like, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, we started thinking about if there's a bit of culpability for somebody being there, like a, like a purposeful stowaway or just an accidental stowaway, which I've since learned that is not a real thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, therefore, the title of the film doesn't quite make sense, but okay. Um, I'm not very good at titling my films. I don't know if you've noticed Arctic and Stowaway. One, one um, word, work. It works, though. It tells you all you need to know. There you go. You know, there's someone there who's not meant to be there, uh, whether it's accidental or not. We don't quite know at first, and eventually, once we do figure it out, it, it doesn't matter. It's about what to do after that. Um, and, yeah, you know, we... Um, that's where it came from, and we started thinking about, you know, maybe put it into a bunker, uh, maybe put it into a lifeboat, but Hitchcock did that really well, into mm-hmm. an island, but how many times have we seen the island survival kind of film? Right. Um, what about space? You know, what about a space shuttle? What about um, the space station or a space mission to Mars? Um, and once we started looking into the science, we realized that we can't Google everything that we needed to know. <laughs> so we just started talking, cold calling people who knew way more about this stuff than we did. Yeah. You know, and what you create here, keeping this to account to an ensemble of four, and you have three purposeful people, you have one who's a stowaway, but he can't he is beneficial and he is an extra set of hands. Um yeah. after the mission commander gets injured and is going to be laid up in that in the very cool 3D printed cast on her arm. Uh, Mm -hmm. But by the same token, as things start playing out and you realize the oxygen situation is what it is and that decision's got to be made. Who gets tossed Mm -hmm. out into space? Um, Right. You know, who's going to be the Tommy Lee Jones that... That lands on on the moon or the planet in his space sh- in his spacesuit and dies, um, right. yeah. and you give us scenarios so that we have our stowaway who has a family who has a, a fascinating backstory. We have our all-consuming scientist David, um, and it's mm-hmm. very interesting the way you develop the traits of these characters because. David, all he talks about is my research, my research, three years of my life. Well, you know, you can't destroy what I've done. Everything is about him. Uh, and, and I found that really interesting. And the whole time I kept thinking he should volunteer to be the sacrificial lamb. But that's not in his personality. Then you've got Anna Kendrick's character of Zoe, who is trying to be human and compassionate all the way around and think problems through. And unfortunately, our commander really is not the kind of commander you need in a situation like this. Mm. Um, she's weak. Mm. She's a little weak. So it's you're looking at all of these puzzles, and the one that I'm that I was gravitating to that should live and not be sacrificed is Stowaway Michael. Mm. Yeah, but you get yeah, you know it's. It, it, we wanted to give um, the, the credence, at least, a, a bit of credence to both sides of the arguments. You know, and, and a lot of them were from um, my initial reaction mm-hmm. versus um, my co-writer's initial reaction, um, which for me it was, um, you know, like. I'd be, sorry, man, you gotta go. Like the airlock is that way. Good luck. You want to record a video for your sister? Like, go ahead. Uh, you know, but you gotta go. Um, he's not meant to be there, um, and, and that's cold, and that's horrible, and that's horrific. But it's the truth. If there, mm-hmm. if you have thousands of people who know every single inch, every single centimeter of this spaceship, telling you that there's nothing you can do, then why waste precious resources? Why waste your time? Why just, you know, it, psychologically, um, even, why get more attached to it? Just get rid of yeah. him. Like, I'm sorry, that, that's how it's got to go. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, unless there's a way for... But that's if you think that he's placed into that kind of position. Yeah. The way that my co-writer thought was that they were all placed into that kind of position. It, it's not his accident, it's the crew's accident. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case... 
then it's a conversation about who's up to go. Yeah. And okay, whatever. I mean, you know, we're we're testing food production on Mars. Like, I'm sorry, he's he's up for it. Like, he's he's on the chopping block too, just like everyone else. And okay, maybe the commander isn't because she's got a she's got to pilot the ship and she's got to make sure that they all die anyway if she dies. Um, <laughs> she, if she's the only one who can do that, then. Oh, fuck. What, what do we do? Yeah. Um, you know, so, um, you do a great job, Joe, of giving us in uh, personality traits and reasons for each one. And, and I love how you spread that out. Um, but w one thing that really, going beyond your visuals with this film, which are stunning, and I love the way you give us the idea of spinning in space as the Earth moves past that, that hatch. Um, mm. That is really a, tr that use of that shot is tremendous. But, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's true, actually. You know, the, the way that they are going to build gravity on, on a spaceship one day is by having it spin around with a giant tether in the middle mm -hmm. um, of uh, a different, like, you know, a spent rocket. Um, that's the, the, the reality of it. So we wanted to build a drama around that. Yeah, I mean, that works so well, and it gives us the passage of time. It gives us the idea of rotation. Um, really, so well done. Um, mm. yeah, something that stands mm -hmm. out so much with this film, and this was the same thing in Arctic, is your score. Volker has really outdone himself with the score here with Stowaway. I love Volker anyway, and I love what he composes. But the way the music carries us, because you have very long periods of time where there is no dialogue. It's just reflective, contemplative. Um, and, you know, like in the scene where David tells Michael, here, it's not going to hurt. Here's a needle. Go for it. And the music at that point, it takes on underpinnings. You've got Volker insert some wonderful Asian, Japanese musical influences um, mm -hmm. akin to, you know, like a kamikaze fighter. It's like you're going in for the death. Um, in other point, in other parts, he builds up. He has some very subtle tremolo that comes into play. Um, yeah. with string and, but everything is so subtly done. You never overpower this film with the score, but it's always there, just like space. And I'm I'm yeah. curious. Yeah, you know, it, it, he the the kind of stuff that he had done with um, his, his pseudonym Hauschka before. You know, um, yep. the prepared piano and and everything um, in that kind of. Sense, I mean, it had been done so incredibly well, and of course, I mean, he was such an amazing composer. His work on Lion, yeah, um, you know, they got nominated for an Oscar. I mean, oh my gosh, we were so glad to get him. He's like the eighth Academy Award nominated person in this film, working on this film. I'm really the only one who isn't. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so anyway, like, what he wanted to do. Was once he saw the set, he just happened to live very, very close to the set. Once he saw it, and once he started getting the sense that uh, you know so much of what they do up in space in reality, and what we were showing in our film too, is experimental. Is it, let's try this thing, let's try that thing. Does this work in space? Does that work in space? No. Yes, we don't know. We gotta, we gotta put it up there. Um, so he started going down that path too. Um, he took the concept of. Um, the tethers, the mm -hmm. very, very long wires that are connecting these two ships. Um, and he was like, how can I make that musical? So when I went to visit his studio, uh, you know, connected to his piano and kind of all over his house, uh, you know, on the staircase leading up to his apartment was giant pieces of piano wire, the longest pieces of piano wire taut in and, uh, you know, making these wobbly, low grumbles. And when I actually went inside, he had pieces of wood with microphones embedded deep into the wood. Um, and he was rubbing the pieces of wood together to create these tonal, weird, space-like sounds. Um, and then when you mix that into an orchestral score, 
mm-hmm. into a piano piece. Then you have something that feels fresh, but is is so weird and new in in a way. You know, like when you create instruments, mm-hmm. um, and you know, to to have that happen like that. Um, that was also the kind of approach that we were taking from uh, with Arctic. You know, so it felt like it was a thematic sequel here. Mm-hmm. Um, with Arctic, we had, uh, you know, our composer, Joseph Trapanese, he ran his piano sounds through the sound of ice cracking. Yep. I still don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds really <laughs> cool, and it sounded amazing by the end of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just, I just don't know um, how they how they start thinking in that way. And, you know, I, sure, I know a lot about music, and I, I did my YouTube channel for years and years and years that was very music-based, but... Um, to have these composers thinking this next level about experimentation and how that leads to uh, a new sound in that way, I, I don't want to be prescriptive for them because that is such, a, to me, a, a better approach than me telling them, you're going to make a song that sounds like this, and then this part's going to have a piece that sounds like that. Um, no, it's... It, that that it, sounds great. It's mm-hmm. stunning. For my money, it is so far, it is my favorite score of the year. Oh, wow. Thank you. I really love this. You know, how challenging were the visuals uh, for Stowaway Joe? Because you've got, you're in contained spaces. And as yeah. we both know, they are a curse and a blessing. <laughs> um, but not only, are you, so. not only are you in contained spaces, but you've got poor Clemens who has to you know, navigate the accoutrement that make up the inside of this ship. And that limits you further um, because of the pl- where the placement of those things have to go and when they jut out, and then you've got to worry about your lighting. So I'm curious how the two of you collaborated for the visual, for the visuals, for the camera movement, and to come up with that tonal bandwidth. Um, yeah. complementing and working with that physical design. Yeah, you know, I, I was pretty adamant from the beginning to to everyone that I wanted to build the entirety of the spaceship um, because these actors, you know, they, you know, we were talking about like, okay, we'll, we'll build them in modules and then we'll just shoot this side of it here and then we'll redress it and that'll save us a lot of money. I said, no, like these they should know the ship inside and out. Mm -hmm. At least three of them should know the ship uh, so, 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 so well because of mock-ups and training on Earth. So how am I supposed to do that unless they um, have spent their time in there? So once we knew that we were going to build a whole ship, then we knew that we could pre-light the entire thing. So um, Clemens and and his team, they purchased, I think it was, five or six kilometers worth of LED lighting uh, <laughs> and pre-wired the entirety of the ship, every single bit of it, ready to be controlled. And they built this amazing app that was able to be controlled by a tablet where if you just tell it where somebody's standing and then the kind of lighting that you want for it and <laughs> the right lights turn on and all of a sudden you have a beautiful light. And one that allows you to fade things in and out mm-hmm. is... Um, we did when people were doing very, very long takes, which is another aesthetic that we were wanting to do here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, it uh, it allows you to move so fast because it's one LED lighting it doesn't get hot. Um, you just need some some little pops here and there every once in a while. Um, and two, it, it allows you to just be like, okay, where do you want to stand? Um, you want to stand over there? Go for it. Um, you know, it doesn't take forever um, for for the actor to be like, oh, you know, I feel more comfortable over here. I feel like you'd be leaning up against something while I'm saying this. Go for it. Lean lean there. We can shoot there. We can shoot everywhere. In fact, I had all the doors closed. I was trying to pitch them on making the bathrooms functional um, so that we can actually be inside of the spaceship all day and feel that feel stuffed in. Right. Uh, and thankfully, Clemens had shot a film for Paul Greengrass that was all inside of a, a plane one time. So he had a lot of experience shooting in a tight, contained space, um, and especially long takes inside of that. So, yeah, you know, it, it's a lot of it is about creating a dogma. Um, with Arctic, uh, we try to not touch the camera as much as possible. And when you do touch the camera, 
how do we make it feel like there's a polar bear tracking him or how do we make it feel like there's finally another person there so the camera can be a little bit more alive it, it can be late it, it can it can miss Mads Mikkelsen every once in a while um, but then with this we need to create a completely different dogma about okay when everything is all right how does the movie look mm-hmm. how's the lighting look how bright is it you know um when everything is not okay and then how does it look then right well, especially with space you know uh where you it's every day is day uh when you get away from the earth and you don't have lights and shadows you just have to deal with the fact that it's always day so you know that's something that we had to contend with joe thank you so much an Thank absolute you. thrill again to talk with you. Thank you. Thanks so much, then. Bye.